So we're about to dive into League One, and this will be the first episode I've recorded with the new patch, so that'll be interesting. And also, what a transfer window we've had. We have signed players from Real Madrid, Montpellier, Hanover in Germany, and a player that hasn't... We've re-signed someone that hasn't played for us since the conference, I think, he says, clicking and checking. Since below the conference. Roll the intro. It's interesting and weird. Roll it. Roll it. Why are you, why are you not rolling the intro? Roll the editor. Roll the intro. No, I won't stop. Hello and welcome back to the Folks in Invicta Save. I am Coach Leftfoot. It's a pleasure to have you with me. And um, yes, we are in Skybet League One. We have done the transfer window. We will be going through the transfers very shortly. At the moment, we are 10th after having zero games played. Uh, if we go and look at Skybet League One, though, you'll see what the predicament is. 55 to 1, we are to get promoted to, uh, to win the league. We were longer odds than that last year. And we went up. We It was an amazing season last year. Absolutely, ridiculously incredible season. But we have jumped up to League One much quicker than I think anyone thought. So it's caused a few issues. Finances-wise, we have £109,000 in the bank. Obviously, we're overspent on wages again, but we're not doing too bad. Um, so finances-wise, we're the poorest in the league. We have the smallest ground in the league. We are paying the least wages in the league. Um, and we've spent the least money in the league, which is, um, you know, great, as they say. Uh, if we look at the schedule, pre-season has been pretty shit. Uh, Celtic, we lost 3-0 at um, Cheriton Road. 2-2 two, two, uh, draw against Bristol Rovers, not too bad at Cheriton Road. A 1-1 draw against Villa was very nice. Um, when we lost to Dover, hopefully Edit today Dave will edit out that sneeze as I just blow my nose. I'll also edit this out, don't worry. So yes, we lost 1-0 to Dover with a Harry Wood OG, a little bit annoying. Um, Oldham, we lost 2-0 to them at home as well. Uh, drew with Bromley, 0-0, so that was terrible. And Drew of Luton 1-1, which was also pretty terrible. Um, and we start the season off against Coventry. I think there may be a the change in the pat the patch they've released and the change of the tactics and the change to the match engine. The general consensus is that why is whilst it's improved one on ones, it's also ruined quite a lot of people's tactics. So we will find out what it's going to do to tactics. We will find out how it's going to go. But before we play Coventry in our opening game in League One ever for folks in the victor we're going to go and look at transfers so there's a two couple of youngsters going on um, at the moment are they ins or outs i think they're, we've got one in and one out so uh, an 18 year old we're looking to buy called adam holland we'll look at him first uh, he's not too bad he's welsh he used to play for man city so yeah he's got some all right stats we'll probably make some money on him um and we're looking to get from aspire a fitness coach which is good uh, on the outs christian grant is a new signing who we will get into but here we go then. First up, Josh Battersby joins. 18-year-old. There's a reason now why we've signed a lot of youngsters, which we will get onto in a bit min in a minute or a bit more admin. But he joins from Man United on a free transfer. Released from their youth academy, I thought he'd be worth a good go. Good lot of pace. And passing, if he can get his technical stats improved, he'll be good. Determination's pretty shit, but I think we might be able to make some money on him. Next up, Oni Weston on loan from Montpellier. This guy looks pretty decent. Dribbling 15, pace 15, acceleration 15. Really quick and good with the ball. Finishing 13, first touch 14. Passing's pretty crap. Technique 2, off the ball 10. Decisions 13, termination 10. Not too bad. Good at heading as well. Six foot, so offers us an all-round package as a striker, uh, really. Which is really, really good to have. Penalty taking 7, so he's going to fit in with the team well. Because we all know that we can't take penalties. Next up, from Real Madrid... Juanme Prado is in the team. Striker, great fitness, good agility, good pace, good acceleration, uh, techniques okay, off the ball's good, decisions good, composure's good, finishing's not bad at 11, first touch is good, heading's good, he's six foot one. Again, an all round striker that's going to give us a lot of different possibilities playing up front. And he, he's from Real Madrid. A man from Real Madrid has agreed to move to Folkestone Invicta. Did you ever imagine that? 
Did you ever imagine that? I mean, don't look at his goal scoring record. That's don't don't worry about that. Don't worry the fact that he hasn't really cut it in the second division of Spain. But he's from Real Madrid and he signed for folks in a victor on a season long loan. If it doesn't work out, we just won't play him. It's fine. But uh, yeah, it's um, I'm quite excited. I'm quite excited by it all to be honest. Penalty taking six. So again. Fits in with the rest of the team well. Next up, the man that we're probably sending out on loan straight away, Christian Grant, uh, signed from Liverpool. Uh, can play as a left wing back, so obviously fits the formation we've got at the moment. Uh, good pace, good acceleration. Technicals need a bit to be desired. Good potential ability, though. Uh, never featured for Liverpool, as you would expect. But, uh, yeah, excited to get him in as well. Lionel Luznig, uh, the first Argentinian, I believe, to ever play for Folks in the Victor. Again, released from Man United, so we're picking up some youth academy players. 18 years old, centre-back, good tackling already, headings shit, markings okay. He's not too bad, but penalty taking three, he'll fit in with the team. That's a running joke that's going to happen now. We can't take penalties if you're joining this series late. That You'll you'll realise that if you go back and watch the catalogue. Six foot two already at the age of 18 is great. Decent strength for his age, jumping reach is good. I think he's going to do quite well in our youth team, and we'll see how he progresses. Again, current ability is not too bad for his age, and potential ability is looking pretty good. So hopefully we can make something um, uh, happen for him, and I'm very excited to have him in. He has dual nationality of Argentinian and English, which is rare. So, a more senior player, Tom Lampsill joins, or Lap Laps Lapsley, 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 Tom, Tom L has joined. Uh, on a free transfer, 28 years old, so breaks the mould of the players that we normally sign. Um, he's been a bit of a journeyman, but we've picked him up. Colchester had him, then Tranmere, Lincoln and filed. And he, he was playing in the National League, got a 6.7. He's played in League 1 before for Lincoln and got a 7.2 after 6 games. I mean, yeah, his average rating drops if you look at the seasons where he played more games, but... As an, oh, another option in central midfield, I think he's good. He brings good work, great, good teamwork, good determination, good bravery. That's something we're really missing in the team. Penalty taking eight, so yep, yeah, he'll fit in with the rest of the team every time. Stamina, agility is decent. Uh, technically, he's not the best, but if he's in there as a sort of destructive midfielder, I think he'll do well. And to have someone with teamwork and stuff, that determination's good. If we, um, tr the plan is to get him into a mentoring group, he's absolutely tiny at five foot six. No offense to anyone that is that height. I don't think you're all that tight, like that's right. But for a professional footballer, obviously five foot six is, is pretty small. But I think on a two-year contract that we've got him in, that'll take him to the age of thirty. We'll probably get some game time off him, and if not, I imagine we'll be able, to be able to sell him for something. Even if it's like 1k, I still think we'll be able to sell him for something. So, yeah, I'm I'm not too I'm not too upset about that. I thought on a free transfer, a decent little player to bring in. Next up, Tyler Reed joins, 26 years old, right back slash right wing back, loves to run with the ball, loves to get forward, dives into tackles, so expect some yellow cards there again. Physically, he's pretty decent for this division. Technically, he's got some good stats. Crossing and dribbling is good. Heading's decent. Marking's good. Tackling's good. Should be able to do everything we want from our wing backs. Now, I did say that the positions I want to upgrade are the wing backs. They were highlighted as what we really needed. Now, yeah, positioning and teamwork are terrible, but I'm still hoping that he'll get through this, get through it for us. So we'll see. What I will say is that. If the match engine has changed that much and now our three our wing back formation doesn't seem to work anymore, if we need to change formation, we're pretty much screwed because I'm I've I did all these before the patch came out. I haven't played a, a game with the patch in any of my saves so far. That sort of gives you the hint of how I'm recording ahead a little bit. I've actually got visitors arriving as I'm recording this video. They're arriving today. When you see this video, they would have been here for three days, I think. So. But yes, I, I think he'll he'll do a decent job. He'll be, he won't be too bad. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do for us. Basically, uh, he signs from Bolton, but used to play at Man United and Swansea. Uh, he's done not too bad. Comes with a bit of history in League Two and League One. Again, we can't go and pick up the really good players. We don't have the reputation to do it as a club because we've gone through the league so quickly. Our reputation, the main draw we have is from the league we're in rather than the club we are but that will change i'm sure that will change over time but uh, yeah tyler reed is in next up because i've ruined it we'll go straight there ryan clamping 25 years old other side left back left wing back worth 50 51 grand we've bought him in on a free transfer uh, strength and physicals are all pretty good apart from agility and, ba and balance um teamwork's a bit poor again positioning is good determination is good crossing is good everything else leaves a little bit to be desired marking 10 tackling 10 heading 10 
should do a good job for us. Uh, he comes with a little bit of history. Colchester, Boreham would add him on loan last year. But again, he has played a little bit of League One football and League Two. Um, not a lot, but he's done all right. Where he's played the more games, his ratings haven't been the best. But I'm hoping we can find that form when he helped Colchester get promoted. So Ryan Clampin is in at left wing back. This is probably the biggest overhaul of a transfer, we, transfer window we've had just because of the step up. So, yeah. Okay, next up, a name that may be familiar to some, Jan Dander joins. 25 years old, can play left wing or attacking midfield. Obviously, we've bought him for the attacking midfield role. Runs with the ball through centre, winds up opponents, plays 1-2, cuts inside from both wings, runs with ball often. Now, he runs with ball often, which is okay. He's got dribbling 11, and he's got pace 10, and he's got uh, technique 12, so he's not too bad. Now, the, the one of the reasons we've brought him in, right... Penalty taking 10. He's in double figures for penalty taking, which is absolutely incredible. Five for eight. So, again, not the tallest, but composure is good on the ball. First touch. Dribbling's decent. Passing's okay on a nine. Bit poor, but not too bad. Comes with flair, teamwork, and vision. Um, and comes with a little bit of history. West Brom, Liverpool, Swansea all come with good pedigree, obviously. Another signing from Colchester. I, I didn't plan it, but this one at least, Yandanda did have a good two good seasons in League One playing a good number of games with a pretty decent average rating. So I think we'll be okay. He's even represented Swansea at championship level and getting a decent rating at that level. So he should be able to kick us on to the next level, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. I don't think the star rating as a fringe player is at all accurate. I think he should be pretty damn good for us, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in that attacking midfield role. Next up, uh, on loan from, uh, from Hanover96, brings in 130k worth of player, £500 a week we've got this guy on, on loan. Absolutely brilliant. He is Allison Jr., Cape Verdean. Look at these physical and mental stats. Like, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. He's got good stats in all the positions we need other than vision. Leadership, I'm not too fussed about, to be honest. He will be playing um, probably more likely as a central midfielder. But really, really good. He dives into tackles, which could be a concern. But tackling 13 is a decent little stat, and I think he's going to be pretty good. His history um, came through the ranks down at Portugal, moved to Germany, 4.2k, hasn't really played for them, went on loan to the third division in Germany and absolutely like bossed it in his first year and then did pretty well in his second year. I'm hoping he can translate that into a slightly better standard of football, but we'll have to wait and see. But I'm, I'm happy with what we've got stats-wise or attributes-wise there. Looking really good. Six foot two as well, so pretty gives us a bit of height where we've signed a lot of other uh, smaller people. But yeah, current ability four star, potential ability four star, 26 years old. So you can see we've broken away from the mould that we've had of just signing complete youngsters. But Alison Jr. is in the van. And then another left back slash left wing back, Zeki Friars, 31 year old, ex Man United, ex Spurs, ex Sunderland, I think. Uh, Crystal Palace is what I was thinking. Uh, comes in and. Well, he brings a lot of pedigree with him. He's played in League One a lot for Swindon and done okay. The main concern we have for Zeki Friars is he's not... He's... He's not the fittest of players and is very susceptible to injury, which was flagged up in the medical. So I postponed it, postponed it, postponed it. Couldn't find anyone else to bring in, so took the risk. But... Corners are okay. Crossing and dribbling's a little bit poor. Could be better, but marking's good. Tackling's good. Positioning's good. Teamwork's good. Work rate's good. Concentration's good. Composure's good. Pace is okay. Acceleration's okay. I think for a left wing back at League One level, he should do pretty well for us. He should do pretty well for us if the formation still works, of course. And then finally, coming back to the club, a guy that we sold when we were in National League South. He's here to give us a bit of depth, and once I signed him, I remember why we sold him. Zeno Ibsen Rossi is back at the club now. Right, I know what you're thinking. Dave, that's a lot of ones he's got as ratings. And I'm not going to argue that fact with you. He can't take a corner, he can't cross, he can't dribble, and he can't score. He can barely have a first touch, and he can't take free kicks. He can't shoot, and he can't throw a ball. Can't really pass, and he can't take a penalty. That's fine. He has no technique. He can't see things. He hasn't got any flair, and his stamina is absolutely dreadful. Now. Now, right. We sold him for 20 grand, right? And he's gone off and carried on playing. 
Yeah. Granted, not brilliantly, but he has gone and played. And we've brought him back as a backup, emergency backup, I will add, at a centre back. However, right, if football manager is correct and doesn't take reputation into account, and I want to play this guy to just go and head the ball, no, not necessarily head the ball, tackle the ball, then he should be okay, right? Tackling, 14. Marking, 14. Determination, 15. Positioning, 10. Aggression, 14. Jumping reach, 13. Acceleration, 13. Pace, 12. Decisions, 12. Concentration, 10. Six foot three. In my mind, this is a good signing to make when we've sold him for 20 grand, bought him back on a free, and he can technically, according to his uh, attributes can do a defensive job right however i am fully of the understanding he is going to be terrible when he plays because football manager and champ manager back in the day and everything like that put ev put so much more weight behind reputation of a player than the attributes they have that is still how i think this game works you can go and sign I could go and sign someone like Craig Dawson, who by now is probably like 40, and will have no pace, and then, but he'll have a good technical and good mental stats. His physical stats would have dropped off, but his reputation would be higher than Rossi, so he'd probably perform better. But I think as a backup, he's not too bad. And there you go. That's all the ins that we bought in. On the outs, we have sold Stan Flaherty to Notts County for 7.5k. Uh, did not cut it last year. Wasn't too impressed. Don't think he'll be able to make the step up. So he's dropped back down into the National League. We also sold Jamie Masco, um, which is why we needed some new left wing backs in, to Boston United for 20.5k. Uh, he did well, actually, at League 2 level. But again, he's dropped down a division, which sort of suggests uh, he knows his own level. They're the only outs that we've had. Um, we've spent zero and bought in £28,000. That's not what I wanted. Uh, transfer history is what I wanted. Uh, released players then. So we have released Antoine Zimiak from his contract. The right wing back never really got a, a good run. Cameron Antwi never really cut the mustard and, and progressed into the level we wanted. Didn't perform well when went on loan to the National League. Uh, Jamie Jealous uh, got cut adrift. He's been signed by Dulwich Hamlet. Again, never really got the opportunities. And when he did, didn't impress in League 2. Edwin Jakobsen is still available on a free transfer. Came in from Nottingham Forest. There was praise for him and high hopes, but he never really made it at all. And Darlington are now interested, so he's not going to stick around. Arton Kalu was another one we bought in from a young thing. Now, he could potentially... These players were released before we got some news, right? So, him and Jakobsen, and I think um, Agabatoma... See, Agamatoma, I've actually tried to re-sign. And he still doesn't want to talk, yeah. So, we've released all those players. These bottom three, probably actually Cameron Antwi as well, because he's 22, could have actually stayed at the club if a bit of news that happened came earlier. Because, now we're in Sky Bet League One, the club have decided we're great to have an under-23s team now. So... We have both. We have an under 23, so people can carry on progressing, and an under 18s as well. So we're really short of, of young players, which is annoying because I've released a load of young players and we could have kept them and still given them game time in the under 23s because they're all 22 or younger. So that's a little bit annoying. But yeah, no, we, I'm actually very happy now that we have an under 23s because it does mean there's more game time for the people that are over 18 and not quite making the first team. We've now got a, a squad that we can put them into, which is uh, which is good, which is good in my opinion. So, But uh, other news then, while we're still doing the admin, we've I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to have time to do a game in this episode. Um, Club Info, we are now estimated value of £2.86 million. We still only have 483 season ticket holders, which is a little bit annoying. But... Um, yeah, we're doing, we're going all right. If we look at facilities, da, da, da. future stadium plans, searching for a new site, plan capacity, 5,000 seated stadium. So they are looking to upgrade the stadium. It hasn't put us in any more debt yet, but I imagine they need to take a loan out to actually build the stadium. So we'll see what happens. We've still got the same owners. We've still got everything like that. Uh, we've gone through the team, so the key player, Allison Jr., hot prospect, Leonor Luzenig, Jay Stansfield is still vice-captain, Okocha is still captain, and I'm still the manager. At the moment, we're going to stick with the formation that's given us loads of success as we've gone through the divisions. Centre-backs, pretty much stay the same. Graciak keeps his place in goal. Uh, we've got Reed and Fryer starting as our wing-backs, Frey and Harris in the middle, Danda sits behind, Taylor Crossdale and Stansfield. 
We haven't unleashed the Prado Western Strike Force yet, but I don't think it'll be too far away. This is going to be very, very difficult. Again, it's fight bravely against relegation. Be competitive, be competitive, be competitive. They're not expecting anything. Um, if we can stay up, it would be amazing. If we go down, I think it's to be expected. So, And the club, the chairman is still very happy. Yeah, we're overspending on wages, but we knew I'd do that anyway. Oh, can I move this? Yeah, I can. I mean, we're not going to go and buy anyone else, so I might as well re like reduce the amount that we're losing on the wages anyway. But uh, yeah, okay, let's go into the first game of League One, and we will be playing Coventry City. We've played them once before, and they beat us. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, on the bench, we get seven subs, which is wonderful. We will obviously we now put a goalkeeper on the bench in Turner. Uh, Lapsdale will go on the bench. Weston will go on the bench. Junior will go on the bench. Prado will go on the bench. Um... I think we'll go Woodward. He's still been good. Clamping will go on the bench as well. And that's seven. So we've got left wing back, right wing back, striker. Holding midfielder, striker. Holding midfielder. Ah, okay. I see the error of my ways. There's no centre back on there. I think laps... Well, you're actually not fit. So we'll give you a little rest. And we will put... Have I really... Da Is Ibsen Rossi? Have I got a filter on here? Have I? Oh my god, I think I have made it so that Ibsen Rossi is our only backup centre-back. That's a concern. That's a big concern. I may need to go and say, is the transfer window still open? I think, is it? I don't know, I think it is. But, um, yeah, that's how we're lining up. We're starting cautious because obviously we're, we're well rated below everybody else in this division. So, I think cautious is the way to go. But let's see if the match engine changes are going to ruin my formation. They're playing in a 4-1-2-2-1. Kelvin Davis up front wants a Villa. Jay Latabileludu. X of Man City. Signed on a free. He's been with them for a while. So Coventry have been in League 1 for quite some time. So they've got a few uh, new gens in there. Dave Dabo at right back. Elder there as well. Ingram in goal. Is that Matt Ingram? Oh God, yeah. I thought, I thought he'd be ancient by now. Look at that career. Bloody hell. Okay, let's get into it. Dressing room. Here we go. Uh... We're away from home. We're the underdogs. Go and cause a black suit us. That is just, just go and just go and enjoy yourself. That's what I should have said, really. Just get to enjoy yourself. We are the underdogs on our first ever game in League One, and here we go. So, in our famous yellowy, orange, amber, and black stripes, Dabo puts in a first tackle and gets the ball. Yeah, we just need to see how this game. We're up to ninth if we get a draw, so that's good. Um, thrown in, Frey picks up the ball. He's got a bit of space into Reed. Reed beats his man. He's into the box. He crosses it across. Oh, MTC couldn't get the finish, and it's cleared away. Now the key, or the big question, is can MTC and Stansfield step up to this division? Do we have people that can score enough goals? Jan Danda into Harris. Harris out to Reed on the right hand side. He gets through. He's got lots of space as that wing back position. Reed puts a cross in. Ingram spills it. Stansfield. Oh, Stansfield again. I thought it wasn't going to go in, but he does stick it in the back of the net. And Jay Stansfield off the mark, answering my question of can he step up? Not really. He missed an open goal and hit the post and then put it in a second open goal. But Reed, I don't think this was a shot. I think this was a cross. Yeah, he's tried to swing in a pro. Ingram sort of messes up. Stansfield then hits the, the post slash side net in and sticks it in on the second attempt. But we find ourselves 1-0 up inside five minutes at Coventry. This is brilliant. This is a brilliant start. Luca Coco with a throw into Friars. Back to Luca Coco. Luca Coco goes long for Reed again, getting lots of space and joy on this right-hand side. He gives it to Frey. Frey lays it into Stansfield. Stansfield shoots and Ingram makes the save. I wonder if he was offside there. He may well have been. I just need to log into my laptop here. Uh, and next to the side of me. But uh, three shots, two on target. A positive, positive start. Back to Lati Budere into deal. Reed wins the header. Well, Reed already looking like a good signing. Elder. Daly's on the ball. Corrigan. That's a poor pass. Fries has picked up into Jan Danda. Jan Danda over the top. What a ball that is. Stansfield's in behind. He's got two. What an assist from Jan Danda as well. And Stansfield finds himself with two in one game. In League One, can we make the step up? I think we can. What a performance this is. 2-0 uh, up against Coventry. Away. Stands for a great first touch. Lovely finish. Great composure. And he puts it past the keeper to make it 2-0, folks. Then who go second in the league? I was about to say top of the league. But Bristol Rovers went and ruined it by scoring a second as well and by going top. Let's give them some praise. What a start to the season this is for the fan. This is... Oh, 
brilliant, absolutely brilliant. As uh, Friars wins the ball into Dabo. Dabo's there into Campbell. Campbell back to Dabo for Coventry. Up it goes to Campbell again. Campbell looks to beat his man. Lays it back to Deal. Deal into Dabo. Dabo puts the ball across. Shipley's there. Heads it over the bar. They got a little bit of free space there, but I'm not too fussed. They are a better team than us, Coventry, no matter what the scoreline suggests. But when you're 2-0 up, you're playing well. Shipley into the free. The free kick goes into the wall. Harris comes forward. It drifts out to the right-hand side. He's trying to launch as a counter. Dabo does get the ball, but then doesn't and gives away a free kick. And it's uh, still 2-0, which is very, very nice. Um... We're playing very well. Taylor, MTC not getting into it. Harris struggling. Friars on the left-hand side struggling. But when you're 2-0 up, you can't really complain. I do appreciate the effort. So we're going to send the same team out there. And I'm going to suggest Bristol Rovers have conceded. Because according to this league table on the side, we are we are top of the league. Say so we are top of the league. Akotcha wins that header where uh, the ball went long. We'll just praise the guys again. And Graciak will look to build out from the back. Akotcha into Frey. Frey to Harris. Harris into Danda. Jan Danda goes out to Fryers with a good ball. Zeki Fryers, can he beat his man? He's just held up well, but he does get round him with a good bit of skill. Ball in Stansfield. He was on for a hat trick, but couldn't put it away that time. We are doing clear cut chances three, half chances two. We have restricted them to nothing. Nothing. They've had three shots on target. None of them have been clear or half chances. So probably from range. Campbell with a ball in towards the back post. McCormick. Oh my god, what a finish. Just as I say, we haven't we still haven't given them any chances, but they have now scored. And it is 2-1. That is one hell of a finish. Campbell got in before Friars and then took it over here. Right-footed cross towards the back post. McCormick, one bounce on the volley. He's, he's got a lot of power out for side foot there, hasn't he? He's got a lot of power out for side foot. Campbell, Glassiak touches it over the bar. And I'm thinking we may just need some fresh legs to reinvigorate. Um, clamping on for Friars at left wing back. And we'll do... Oh, who is the uh, who is the poacher? It must be Juan Mar... Prado. There he is then. The guy on loan from Real Madrid is going to come on for his debut unless MTC scores us a goal or gets an assist here and then I'll keep him on the pitch. MTC back to a Acocha and uh, nothing comes from that. But we will... Uh, oh, I've obviously just said praise. They get another corner. A uh, free kick, sorry. Dabo. A throw in even. I'm all over the place. Shipley block. Deal shoots and Glaciak dives on the ball. Makes the save. And uh, Coventry just seemed to have turned the screw a little bit here. Davies goes back to Elder. Ball in. Humphreys with a header away. Harris gets a flick to it. Deal. Rajepi into Deal. Out to Dabo. Dabo cross is blocked. And it will be a corner kick to Coventry. Let's see what we can do here. Campbell. Ball in. a Akotcha. McCormick picks up the loose ball. Goes back to Corrigan. Corrigan to McCormick again. Score of the wonderful goal. Blocked and goes behind. Half an hour to go. Uh, get creative. Is that going to annoy them? It pressured Luca Coco, but inspired a few others and motivated some. Harris not playing one of the fresh legs in the middle of the park, maybe. Get Lapsil on for a debut. I think that's the right thing to do. It was Harris on it, yeah, 6.6. .6. So, Lapsil on. We'll switch you two over, I think. Because then you want your better passer, obviously, as the playmaker. The laps are on. All three subs done. Weston's going to have to wait for his debut. Ibsen Rossi is going to have to wait for his return. Corrigan. Oh, it's an own goal from Lapsil. Literally, possibly his first touch of the ball is an OG. And we've given up a 2-0 lead. It's 2-2. And the substitution I made has resulted in... What are you doing? What are you doing in an OG? Unbelievable. Right, positive. Let's go for this. Come on. I'd rather get... Zero points than one? What am I thinking? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I really want to change that back to cautious. Dabo. Ball across. Shipley shoots. Glaciak. What a save. I'm going to go to balanced rather than anything else. To give up a 2-0 lead. We've not... They've had two half chances. No clear-cut chances. We haven't really created much in this second half. McCormick over the ball. They can't do anything with it. Oh, man, it's just so frustrating to give up that 2-0 lead. We've played really well. Look at the positives of it. Last minute of injury time. Graham into Dabo. Goes across Shipley. Akotcha heads it away. Rajepi is robbed. Lapsil get an assist and make up for it. He lays it into Prado. Stansfield tries to go back to Prado. Over the top. He's offside. Referee, get your flag up. He was, uh, he was offside. Yeah, he was. I was, you know, appealing in hope rather than knowledge. But uh, it seemed to work. 15 seconds to go. And we have a free kick. I probably would have taken a draw before the game. First game in League 1 away at Coventry. I probably would have taken a draw. But 
it's a bit of a sting in the teeth when you're 2-0 up. And there is the full-time whistle. A 2-2 draw. And as I said, I can't I can't be disappointed with that, even though we've given away a 2-0 lead. But there we go. We start off League One with a point against Coventry. You've seen all the new signings. Question of the day is easy. Who's the best signing we've made in the Jan in the summer transfer window? Lapsil, yeah. Lapsil made his debut. Let's not let's not talk about Lapsil was given a rousing ovation and then went and scored an own goal. Amazing. Stansfield got two goals. Maybe could have had a hat trick as well. Missed a couple of chances later on in the game. But uh, yeah, a decent start. Not too bad. It leaves the table looking like this as the start. Up into eighth position to start. But only one game played, so not bad at all. But thank you so much for watching. Go and check out all the other series, some of the other series we've got going on on the channel. Subscribe by clicking the button above. And uh, if you want to donate anything to the channel, the Patreon link is in the description below. But thank you so much for watching. For now, I'm out. Cheers.